Hello sa lahat and welcome back sa ating online classroom. At today, i-discuss natin kung paano nyo ba iintindihin yung normal curve at sana marami kayong matutunan sa discussion na ito. So, para saan ba itong normal curve? Kailan ito ginagamit? At paano ito i-interpret? Yan yung mga bagay na gusto kong i-share sa inyo today. Ngayon, um, before we proceed, let me tell you that my discipline is psychology. So, yung mga examples na gagamitin ko dito ay mostly psychological. But if you are not from psychology, I would say na ma-appreciate nyo pa rin naman itong discussion na ito. Only that, ang mga examples ko ay psychological. Kung bagay yung galing sa mga examples namin. But anyway, um, I hope, kahit anumang course nyo, marami kayong matutunan sa discussion na ito kung ano nga ba ang normal curve. Sige, so tingnan na natin. So, um, let's look at this PowerPoint about the normal distribution. So, before we proceed, tatanungin ko kayo, which of the following can be considered as well distributed or let me um, specify normally distributed? Letter A, 100 students take the same exam. 90 of them got a score close to 100. Only 3 failed, while 7 scored 50 to 90. What about situation letter B? People were asked to rate their job satisfaction from 1 to 10. Most of them said that, the average, that they are averagely happy. Only a few said that they are very happy. And same goes for very unhappy. So karamihan nasa gitna. Konti lang yung extremes. Sa letter A, Maraming halos maka-perfect score at konti lang yung nasa gitna at konti lang din yung pagsak o yung mababa yung grade. But let's look at letter C. The latest survey of the government, just, this is just a hypothetical data, showed that 75% are poor, 15% are considered middle class, and 10% are considered rich. Ibig sabihin, sobrang daming mahirap. Konti lang ang middle class. At mas konti ang mayaman. So, ang question dito, ano kaya sa kanila ang normally or statistically well distributed? Pag sinabi kasi natin well distributed, dapat mas maraming average than extreme. Kasi kung mas maraming extreme, for example, sobrang daming mayaman, sobrang daming mahirap, we can no longer call it a normal distribution. Kasi pag sinabing normal distribution, it should follow the shape. So sa tatlong choices natin, ang nag-iisang normally distributed dito ay yung B. Mas maraming nasa gitna kaysa doon sa two extremes. So let's see that. Ito po yung normal curve. And I suggest that before tayo mag-proceed sa discussion na ito, Kung hindi nyo pa napanood yung video ko about sa kung paano ba mag-transform ng raw score sa C-score, panoorin nyo muna yon. Ilalagay ko yung link ng video na yon sa description natin. Pero kung may idea na kayo paano yung raw score to C-score, pwede nyo nang mapakinggan itong discussion na ito. Kasi related yung dalawang topics na yun sa isa't isa. So sa normal distribution, pinaniniwalaan natin na mataas ang probability na yung isang tao ay nasa average range at mababa yung probability na yung tao ay nasa either extreme. Kumbaga, kunyari, sweldo. Karamihan ng tao, katamtaman lang yung sweldo. Dapat sa isang society, konti lang yung sobrang baba ng sweldo and same goes for, konti lang din yung mayaman. Pwede rin itong gamitin sa intelligence. Most of your friends are averagely Intelligent, okay? Or average when it comes to their intelligence. Konti lang yung mga taong na meet natin na gifted o yung merong mga learning, um, may learning difficulties. Konti lang sila. That's why sobrang konti lang ng mga kilala natin na sobrang talino. And at the same time, it's rare for us to meet someone with, for example, intellectual disability. Karamihan ng mga kilala natin nandito sa gitna, nasa average range. At sa normal curve, kapag mas malapit ka sa gitna, ibig sabihin average yung performance, yung status mo. Pero kapag mas malapit ka dun sa tails o dun sa buntot, sa left at right, ibig sabihin mas malayo ka sa average. 
But here's the difference. If you are on the right part of the curve, it means na mas mataas ka compared to the average. For example, when it comes to money, mas mayaman ka. Pero kung nandito ka sa left side o left tail ng ating distribution, it means that you are lower compared to the average. For example, mas financially challenged ang isang tao. When it comes to IQ, if you are um, if you are more intelligent than a typical person, you will be on the right side. But if you have certain learning difficulties, then I guess that you will be on the left side of the curve. Alright? So, yun po yung mga applications ng normal distribution. At merong mga characteristics itong normal curve. The first is that it is bell-shaped. It is normally distributed, which I've been discussing to you earlier, since earlier. Ang pangalawang karakteristik ay yung measures of central tendency, yung mean, yung median, at yung mode, lahat yun ay nasa gitna. Or approximately malapit sa gitna. Kasi kapag ang distribution magkakahiwala yung mean, median, at mode, then that is no longer normal or well distributed. Right? So, at ang pangatlo niyang karakteristik is symmetrical. Kung gaano karami yung proportion ng nasa left side, ganun din sa right side. Later, I'm going to show you a more detailed illustration for that property. And the last one is asymptotic. It means that the tail of the curve does not touch the x-axis. Or in example nito sa tunay na buhay, this extends to infinity, ibig sabihin, we will oh, there's a possibility na meron tayong mamit na tao who will always break the record for the highest IQ. So we are not saying na eventually magiging zero etong nasa right tail, but we are open to the probability na posibleng meron pang mas matalino, mas mayaman, mas mabilis, at marami pang iba. So this is how the normal curve should look like kapag nandiyan ay mga proportions. And to make it easier, what I do with my students is, instead of looking at this as proportions, I ask them to transform this into percentage by multiplying it sa 100. So sabi ko, i-multiply nyo sa 100 at magiging percentage yan. For example, instead na 0.3413, magiging 34.13. Instead na 0.1359, magiging 13%, 0.59. Ito ay magiging 2.14% at ito ay magiging 0.30. Um, ito ay magiging, um, sorry, I should correct this one. Alright, I made some adjustments. Okay, there should be two zeros before 13. Para kapag kinonvert siya, it's 0.13%. So, less than 1%. Ibig sabihin, kumbaga, um, sobrang 0.13% yung chance na may mamimit tayo na nandito sa Buntot na ito. Or in this case, um, for example, yung, sobra, yung meron po talagang severe intellectual disability, there's a less than 1% chance to meet someone with that um, condition. On the other side of the equation, siguro bihira lang din tayo makakita ng tao na intellectually gifted. Kaya napakaliit ng mga percentages dito sa dulo. Pero karamihan ng mga kilala natin, mga friends natin, average ang kanilang intellectual capacity. Kaya, ito po ay merong magkabila ang 34%. Ito kasi yung average, yung gitna. Pero hindi, strictly speaking, this is not only the average, but lahat ng mula dito hanggang dito, they are considered average. So, sir, gano karaming tao yun? Okay, gano kaya karaming tao sa isang population ang makukonsidera natin bilang average? So the answer to that is, in order to compute for this area from here to here, ang gagawin nyo ay, i-add nyo yung percentages nito. Remember, tinransform na natin na naging 34% na siya instead na 0.3413. So the answer is, mula dito hanggang dito, 68% ng mga tao ang kinoconsider na katamtaman o average. Alright? Sir, bakit ito hanggang dito at ito? papunta sa left, ay hindi na average. Ang tawag na, kasi kapag nandyan ka na, it's either above average or below average ka na. For example, yung classmate mo na medyo competitive sa classroom, nandito na yung kanyang score sa IQ test, above average na siya. Alright? Hindi na siya considered na typical na 
average. Alright? So, ayun po. Um, I hope nasundan niyo yung kung bakit ko naging, bakit siya naging 68%. Kasi po, from here to here, ito ay 34%. Ito ay 34%. Kaya po naging 68%. Anyway. So, ano po yung mga symbol na nandito sa ating baba? Remember, this is the mu, which is the symbol for the mean or the average. And this is the symbol um, sigma, which is for standard deviation. So, what, is, what does it mean na meron pong plus 1 standard dev, 2 standard dev, plus 3 standard dev, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3? Let's see that. Alright, pero before we proceed to that one, pinapakita ko lang sa inyo ano po yung distribution na hindi normal. Meron po tayo negatively skewed at positively skewed. Sa negatively skewed, ang isang example dito ay mas maraming mataas ang score sa exam kesa mababa. Kapag ang distribution ay negatively skewed, bakit siya negatively skewed? Bakit ganyan yung tawag? Kung ang nasan yung buntot, yun yung title ng skew na yan. So, nasa left side, so negative, kaya negatively skewed. Alright? At kapag negatively skewed, ang from left to right, ang order niyan ay mean, median, and mode. Ang madali tandaan, yung median, palaging nasa gitna. Yung mode ay yung tok-tok ng curve. Ibig sabihin, kung sa exam ko, maraming naka-98, that will be the mode. Bakit po ang mean nandito sa pinaka-left side? Ibig sabihin kasi, di ba ang mean naapektuhan ng outliers? Kapag merong nakascore ng mababa sa aking exam, kahit maraming mataas, kung may isang babagsak, hahatakin niya yung mean, mababa. Kaya yung mean ay nahatak to the negative side. Kabaliktaran yung totoo for the positive skewed. Kunyari dito ay maraming bagsak, tapos may isa kang naka-perfect. So hinahatak niya yung mean papunta sa high score or sa right side. Tapos yung mode, kunyari maraming naka-5 over 100, yun yung mode, yung 5. And what have you noticed? Yung median, kahit anong distribution, palagi siyang nasa gitna. So students, huwag kayong malilito dito. Alright? So ano pong implication nito, sir? Kunyari, ikaw ay affiliated sa government, kunyari statistics ang iyong field. If you're going to report something about, for example, sweldo ng mga Pilipino, at hindi siya normal, but rather, skewed siya. Mas maraming mahirap kaysa mayaman. Huwag mong ire-report yung mean. Kasi kumbaga, nakahatak ng mga mayayaman yung sweldo ng mga mahihirap, kaya nagmumukhang mayaman ng Pinoy. But in reality, hindi tayo ganun kaya. Manahatak lang tayo ng mga um, elite in our society. So, Instead of reporting the mean, kapag ganito yung situation, you should report the median. Alright? Kanan nyo gagamitin yung median kapag magre-report? Kapag skewed o tagilid yung distribution. Pero kapag normal, it's okay either to report the mean, the median, but in reality, the mode is rarely used in reporting, in research. It's usually the mean and the median. Let's proceed to this part. Alright? So kung ito po yung mean, ito yung standard dev, anong ibig sabihin yan? Ayan po, if your score is here, then wala ka sa mean. Nandito ka eh. Ano kayang basa dyan? One standard deviation above or below the mean. Remember, kapag papunta sa right, ibig sabihin mas magaling ka than the average. So, the proper way to, to, um, to interpret this is one standard deviation above the mean. So, kung sinabihan ka na, you know what? Ang talino mo, one standard dev ka about the mean. Matuwa ka. Kasi ibig sabihin, mas magaling ka compared to the people na nandito sa left side mo. Ang dami mong natalo. Ganun kataas yung score mo. Pero mas matuwa ka kapag nandito ka. How do we interpret this? Two standard deviations above the mean. Sir, bakit two? Dalawang standard dev o dalawang linya na yung tinalon niya. At kapag ganito, mas matalino ka pa, or mas mayaman ka pa, or mas mabilis ka pa tumakbo kung athletics ito. Three standard deviations above the mean. Alright? Sir, ano po ba yung starting point na consider na gifted or matalino ang isang estudyante? The rule of thumb is two standard deviations above. So kapag ang estudyante, napansin ko, naka 2SD above na, um, parang nakikita ko na yan as this person is performing excellently compared to others. 
right? Yun ang sinusunod sa stats, yung, yung two standard deviations away from the mean. So, kapag ang standard dev mo, naka, kapag ang, ang score mo ay two standard dev na pataas, two, three, four, outlier na yung tawag sa'yo. The same goes for the other side of the equation. So, ito po ay one standard deviation below the mean, two standard deviations below the mean. So, ito po yung medyo, um, pag ang student ko naka two standard dev below the mean, na alert na ako, and sasabihin ko, kailangan ko siyang bigyan ng extra materials or kailangan ko siyang bigyan ng extra lessons para maka-catch up siya. At mas malala yung three standard deviations below the mean. Kung liyaman yung pinag-uusapan natin, nandito yung mga kapwa natin na um, homeless. Sobrang baba ng kanilang compensation compared sa average sa society. Ganyan sila kalayo from the average. Isipin mo, maswerte ka kung nandito yung sweldo ng family ninyo. Pero yung may kapwa tayo na nandito o oh, nandito. Right? So, application. Para makarelate kayo, kahit ano pa mang course nyo, maintindihan nyo yung normal curve. And finally, let's apply that to Z-score. For example, you wanted to know who is the best in English in your class. Your two classmates, Miguel and Juan, scored 35 and 25 respectively. Ang tanong ko, can you conclude immediately that they are better compared to the entire class? In psychology, ang sagot dyan, I know. Bakit? Kasi binigay lang yung score ni Miguel at ni Juan. Pero wala tayong idea ano ba yung performance ng grupo na kinabibilangan nila. So if you are in psych, you're taking psych assessment right now, always remember that in psych, C scores, I sorry, raw scores are meaningless without interpretation. So para maging meaningful ang raw score, kinoconvert natin into Z score. And that's why I suggested to you earlier na balikan niyo yung video natin kung paano ba mag-convert ng raw score to Z-score at yun ay nasa description. Right. So, ang Z-score po kasi ang mean niya ay 0 at ang standard deviation niya ay 1. Kaya yung Z-score na 0 ay nilalagay sa gitna at yung 1 ay nilalagay sa kanan, yung negative 1 ay sa kaliwa. Sir, bakit yung 1 ay nasa kanan? Kasi di ba ang standard dev niya ay 1. So, if you go... Um, if you have a higher Z-score, magpa-plus 1 ka lang na magpa-plus 1. Kung baga, if your Z-score is, if your if we're talking about Z-score, if your 1 standard deviation is above, that will be 0 plus 1. Sir, bakit plus 1? 1 ang standard deviation. Paano po kung ang, ang um, paano po kapag dito na, 2 standard deviations, paano naging 2? Kasi po, 0 plus 1 plus 1. So, ganun siya. Ganun po yan kin curve. Alright? Ganun mo siya ilalagay sa isang normal curve. And we can have a part 2 for that discussion. Anyway, so ayan. So, gusto mong malaman, alright, yung kamusta ba yung performance ni Miguel at ni Juan. Pero this time, meron na tayong data from the class. And they, ang average score ng class ay 28 with a standard deviation of 3. Kaya pwede na natin i-convert into a Z-score. Tapos, ganito nyo siya ko-computent. Alright? Doon sa mga nanonood na ng video ko about the C-score, alam niyo na kung paano ko nakuha itong um, computation na ito. At pwede na natin silang i-plot. Si Miguel po, ang kanyang Z-score ay 2.33. Kaya, dito siya. Si Miguel ba mas magaling compared sa classmates niya? Definitely. Kasi siya ay nasa right side ng class average. Pero si Juan, ang kanyang Z-score ay negative 1. Kaya, siya po ay... Um, sa ating safest word, mas mahina or um, hindi siya ganun kagaling cognitively compared sa kanyang mga classmates. Kaya, lagi niyong tatandaan na sa normal curve at sa Z-score, kapag ang Z-score mo ay positive, ikaw ay mas magaling compared sa average. Pero kapag ang Z-score mo ay negative, ikaw ay mas mahina compared sa average or mas mababa. For example, kung ang usapan dito ay sweldo, Kapag ang Z-score mo ay positive, mas mataas ang sweldo mo. Pero kapag ang Z-score mo ay negative, mas mababa ang sweldo mo. Alright? Pero huwag kayong matataranta kung ang Z-score nyo ay nasa pagitan ng negative 1 to positive 1. Kasi kahit hindi siya 0, ito ay malapit pa rin sa mid o sa average. Alright? So, from here to here, considered po yan na average. Pero kapag nandito na, 1 to 2. 
above average, ito ay below average. Kapag 2 pa taas at negative 2 pa baba, yan po ay outlier or kakaiba compared sa grupong kinabibilangan niya. So that is it for this discussion. There will be a part 2 of this discussion at sana marami kayong natutunan at sana i-share nyo rin ito sa mga classmates nyo na hihirapang intindihin ang normal curve at ang z-score. Yun lamang. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you.